Okay, I am back now having uh, just eaten and uh, we are on our way to Marib in Syria uh, for the next leg of our little adventure. So, we will now meet uh, a couple of recurring characters. Um, there's Dwayne and Pearl. And I'm going to speak to. Hey there, young fella. Flat here. Speak you the English? Speak you the Anglaise? Uh, Parlez vous Anglais? Yes, see, si, and indeed we. Oui. And rather better than you by the sound of it. My name is Nietzsche. Welcome to my grand emporium of quality merchandise. So, this is your stand? Oh, yes, sir. Though stand does not begin to do it justice. The finest in this bustling metropolis. This is a bustling metropolis? Well, yes. not per se, no. How much are those books there on the shelf? Have you any Syrian pounds? I think I might have a couple of Irish punts. Then they're too expensive for you, sir. You speak very good English. Thank you, sir. I learned from tapes that my uncle procures. Oh, a language course. No, sir. Jeeves and Wooster. Gussie, Fink, Nottle, Aunt <laughs> Agatha, Wothall. Does the word Templar mean anything to you? Templar. Ah, Templar. <gasps> Templar. Why, yes, of course. It does? Yes! A splendid series of books by Mr. Leslie Chatteris, featuring the roguish Mr. Simon Templar. Great! That's a real help, Nijo. Anything else? The Saint television program, featuring Mr. Roger Moore, of the quizzical eyebrow, and a stick man with a halo. Bing! Bing. Let's probe a bit more, see if he knows anything else about the uh, Templar. So all Templar means to you is Roger Moore. I only watched it for the stick man with the halo. Bing. He was better animated. So I'm correct in saying that the word Templar doesn't mean much to you. Well, there was the Order of Knights who were wiped out in an Inquisition in 1312, I suppose. That's them. What else do you know? Just how much information do you think there is on a Trivial Pursuit card? <laughs> what? From the medieval edition. We had it on the stand a couple of years ago. Ask me what a future is. Go on, I know all this stuff. Uh, never mind. Okay, forget about the Templars for a minute. What do you know about knights? Like the Crusaders? They came to the East on an insane and pointless mission. They sacrificed thousands of lives, including their own, for insensate pride. How anyone can find them romantic confounds me. Have you seen this man before? No, sir. I'm glad to say. Cold eyes. Okay, let's leave. Uh, so long, Nijo. Nijo. Toodle peep, sir. Toodle peep. And uh, let's go speak to Pearl. Hello. I was wondering whether you could help me. Why, hi there, handsome. What can I do for you? Hi, my name's George. I was just... Well, it certainly is delightful to meet you, George. I was... My name's Mrs. Henderson, but you can call me Pearl, I'm sure. Okay, Pearl. I was... So nice to meet a friendly American face so far from home. Pearl? Yes, dear? I was just wondering if you could help me. Why, sure, precious. Do you know anything about medieval weaving? 
I do a little needlework, but gosh. It's okay. It was a long shot. Have you talked to the boy on the bric-a-brac stand? Oh, you've met him? His name's Nijo, you know. Oh, he's just so cute, I could die. I'd love to bundle him up and take him back to Ohio. He might not thank you. <laughs> I'm looking for something ancient, you know. Something to impress the folks back home. The poor boy was trying to do his best, but we still haven't found anything. Have you ever heard of a group of knights called the Templars? Sounds familiar. I remember. Dwayne had a book. The Holy Something and the Holy Something Else I can't quite recall. I read a little of it. And? Seemed like a lot of hooey to me. So, tell me a little about yourself, Pearl. Me? Oh, a gentleman's interest is always so flattering. Well, my husband and I run a greetings card company in a cute little place called Akron in Ohio. Akron? Cute? Little? <laughs> Is your husband around, Pearl? Well, as a matter of fact, yes, he is. Sorry to disappoint you. Well, it looks like I've we're going to go talk now, to Pearl. Pearl. It's been a pleasure, George. Don't be a stranger. He didn't have anything that I needed. Hi, uh, I was wondering whether you could help me. Why, sure, son. Always got time for a fellow American. The name's Henderson. Dwayne Henderson. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Henderson. Hell, boy. I'm not in the office. Call me Dwayne. Oh, okay. Dwayne? My name's George Stobart. Hi, George. Have you talked to Nijo? Nijo? He's the youngster on that junk stand, right? Yeah, we've met him. He's a smart kid, speaks four languages, and he's never had a day's formal education. He should go far. Kept trying to peddle garbage on us, though. You're not going to find much worthwhile around here. I know that, and you know that. But try telling Pearl. She reckons there's antiquities in them, Doris Dam. Hmm. We'll find one. Do you mind if I ask you an odd question? Okay. But I might not answer it. Do you know anything about the Templars? The Knights Templar? Yep. Nope. Nothing at all. Well, you knew they were an order of knights. What I know and what I say are two different things, boy. I haven't lasted as long as I have in this business without knowing that. What business in is that? this business? Sure. The greetings card business. Oh, please. <laughs> I saw a medieval picture of a woman, royalty or nobility, something like that. She was looking in a mirror, but the reflection was of a man with three faces. What do you think of that? Well, I think you should be in therapy. Does the image of a knight holding a crystal ball mean anything to you? Hell no. What would a knight want with a hunk of glass? I don't know. That's the problem. What's wrong, boy? It's not a crystal ball. It's a it all came together in my head. What the conspirators had mentioned losing. The strange perspective of the manuscript. It's a lens. What's a lens, George? Do you think bulls have any significance around here? Weird question, George. Nope, I don't think they have. What does Pearl do for a living? Oh, I run a greetings card company. And Pearl writes the poems for him. You ought to ask her to recite some. You're a long way from home, Dwayne. Could say the same about you, George. Me? Well, I'm just sightseeing, that's all. Without a camera? Kind of lags to come all this way and not take pictures. Mind if I take a picture of you, George? What? Uh, why? Ow! Uh, you could have warned me. You don't mind, do you, George? The folks back home will be real interested. What exactly do you do, Dwayne? Didn't I say? Oh, I run a greeting card company. Yep, 
We're based in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland? Pearl said you're in Akron. What was that? Uh, nothing. Just thinking out loud. Okay, so we're done with... Okay, well, I'll see you Dwayne. around, Dwayne. Count on it, George. I wasn't hungry and didn't want to buy fruit, so I didn't start a conversation. So let's head over this way. Talk to Mr. Kebab. Kebab. Hi, what's your name, sir? Hello, hello, you buy kebab. Musku. Well, goodbye. Have a nice day. Most good. It was a kebab stand, and an ugly one at that. The stall holder's face wasn't a great ad for running a kebab stand. Right, let's head up here. And we'll come to a carpet place, which has a very familiar logo. I had nothing to buy a carpet with, and didn't want to lug one around anyway. It was the pattern. I'd seen that pattern somewhere recently. The matchbook bore a pattern of swirling color and the words Club Alamut. Hi. Hello, sir. Lovely carpet. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? Ah, give to me, give to me. Alamut. Welcome. Thank you. Many beneficent greetings, my most fortunate possible friend. Huh? Do I know you, mister? No. No. And again I say, no. no. But, my friend, do you not see our mutual good fortune in this meeting? How frank do you want me to be? You are a traveler, yes? Boy, you must be the world's greatest detective. No, I am told that is Sherlock Holmes of the big forehead and slipper <laughs> full of shag. I, as contrast, am world's greatest luxury taxi driver. I can see where this is going. I am Ultar, taxi driver and luxury guide per excellence. Yes. This I had to hear. Where does your heart desire to go? Simply mention the name to your obedient servant, and we shall fly there, swift as the eagle. Oh, well, I don't really want to leave Marib yet, but I'm sure that if I do, you'll be the first to know. He's good. You know where you want to go, you come to Ultar. Thanks. See you around, Ultar. Be having a pleasant day, full of shining experiences and happiness, my friend. Hello again, Ultar. Great hellos, munificent foreigner and possible future client. Well, you never know. Would you mind talking to me? He's most agreeable. This is how Ultar learns such splendid English, yes? Yes. Okay, let's uh, question him a bit. Have you met the American couple? Have Ultar met them? Have Ultar met them? Yes, Ultar have met them. And? The most ungenerous. Ultar offered to show them wonders of countryside. They say, is there anything ancient? Ultar say, yes, of course. Nature is ancient. They say, no, anything ancient made by men. And Ultar say, have you seen taxi? Fan belt older than Ozymandias. <laughs> but they gone. What do you know about the kebab seller? A most miserable man. Ultar say, cheer up, matey mate. It might never happen. 
and he say, Shut up, Ultar. Fancy that. Not at all. Arto has face like the drizzle that falls on the midweek afternoon. Whatever that is. Do you know anything about the Templars? Of course. Yes? What can you tell me? Great Sheba band of the 60s. Uh, no, n that's not really... Who put the bop in the bop, bop, <laughs> bop, bop, bop? Yeah, eternal questions. What do you make of that boy in the market, Nejo? Nejo? Ha! Ayub's boy is too big for sandals. I speak splendid English and he laugh. He say, Ultar, you big ox, you split infinitive. I say, I split your head if you stay still long enough. <laughs> Pretty funny, yes? Hilarious. You should be on cable. This place is certainly hard to find. Oh, yes, it is most exclusive. The membership can be no more than... Hmm. Kind sir, what would you guess the population of the village to be? Gee, I don't know, a couple of thousand? Then I would estimate the membership to be no more than a couple of thousand. Okay. See you around, Ultar. Fare you most splendid, good sir. Right, so... I want to go to the bathroom. Damn, the door's locked. Uh, I'm sorry? Did, did you say something? He say you not to go in toilet. Read sign, matey. Matey? It lose something in translation. By staring hard at the notice and squinting, I discovered I couldn't understand a word of it. My Arabic, Russian, and Japanese have a lot in common. I can't read a word of any of them. The notice didn't mean anything to me. Hello again, Ultar. Praise be to Allah. I am blessed with your bountiful presence once more. Could you tell me what that sign means? It says, door stay shut until brush come back. Signed, the management. Oh, well, what does that mean? Manager buy lovely new toilet brush, leaves it by wash basin for ten minutes, come back, it's been stealing, stolen, not even out of wrapper. He damn cross, lock up toilet and say, nobody use fine pristine toilet until brush given back. We say, what we do till then, eh? He say, Cross legs and use superior willpower. <laughs> and that's what you've been doing? No. Ultar use bucket. Okay. Bye for now, Ultar. May good fortune follow you, And we may have already Mr. seen the toilet brush. Let's go out this way. Suddenly, I realized the horrific truth. The guy was basting the kebabs with a toilet brush. It may never have seen the inside of a toilet bowl, but it was still hardly appetizing. Let's give him a quick chat too. Hello again, sir. Hello, kebab? Mmm. Yeah. Well, okay, never goodbye. Mind. Have a nice day. Most good. So. What I can do is. Hi, Nijo. Hello again, sir. And how may I help you this time? What do you know about that couple? Oh, they're American. Is that all? The chap's a little odd. As for the lady, it's a funny thing. But I get the impression she's a lot cleverer than she's letting on. 
I met an interesting guy earlier, a cab driver. Ah, that would have to be Uta, a barbaric sort of chap. Oh, he's not that bad. You know how he speaks in Pidgin English? That's how he speaks in Arabic, too. Who's the guy selling the kebabs? Oh, that's Arto. A miserable blighter, to be sure, sir. He doesn't seem very happy. He never is. Day in, day out, a face like a wet Wednesday. Whatever one of those is. <laughs> Does he speak any English? <laughs> Not cogently, no. Look, this is going to sound a bit strange, but I need Arto's brush. What? The brush he bastes the kebabs with? Yes. Let me find some dirty postcards for you instead. Nijo, this is serious. Arto stole that brush he's using from a friend, and I want to get it back. Perhaps I could help you, old chap. Uh, maybe? Perhaps? Maybe what? Perhaps what? I do not wish to see mercenaries, sir, but uh, I am a merchant and merchants trade. Oh, no, no, merchant? just what you want. This isn't Sears and Roebuck here. Well, if you're going to be disagreeable... No, no, you're right. Uh, what would you like? What have you got? What do you think of this, eh? Oh, sir, what a splendid plaything. One day, when I am rich, I am going to build a world-renowned collection of brightly colored balls. Are you serious? In deadly earnest. People will come from far and wide to see my... Yes? ...collection. The Rockefellers and the Gettys can keep their hordes of so-called fine art. But answer me this. What good is a Picasso, I ask you, if you cannot bounce it off a wall? You may have a point. Sir, for such a marvelous thing, I would gladly help you. I thought merchants were supposed to be wily and never reveal what they really want. Bah! I say to mercantile greed, I have the soul of the Eastern, and I desire that red bouncy thing beyond reason. Do you understand? Uh, not really. If I give you the... I've already told you. I'll help you if you give me the ball. What's it to be? Yes. All right. <coughs> Here you go. People say bad things about Americans, but you're okay in my book. What people? What bad things? Never mind that now. Remember the brush? Right. Yes, the brush. All you have to do with Arto is be polite. It lightens his day, makes it all worthwhile for him again. How can I be polite to the guy when I can't speak a word of Syrian? Arabic. That's what I meant. Simply memorize this phrase. il ach il kalb il ach il kalb Close enough. Now, go over to Arto and deliver those honeyed words even unto his delicate ear. He won't be able to do enough for you. Really? Really? What exactly does Il Akul Kalb mean? A polite but subtly complimentary greeting. He won't be able to do enough for you. See you okay. around, Nijo. Pata for now, sir. Now let's go chat to Arto. Or whatever his Hello name is. again, sir. Hello. <clears throat> Kebab? Mmm. Yeah. Um. Il Akul Kalb? Filthy. Bad. Bad. I kill you. Whoa. Calm down. I just. Feet. Do your thing. Let's go back down. And let's ignore him. 
to speak to Nijo again. Hi, Nijo. What the heck did you tell me to tell him? Patience, sir. Patience? Patience? I've been chased by a homicidal kebab seller, and you expect me to be patient? But consider, sir, while you were running from the irate Arto, the irate Arto wasn't using the brush. Hold on. Are you telling me that I've been used as a diversionary tactic? Yes. Your brush, sir. Thank you. I can't believe that you put me on that kebab seller's death list for a toilet brush. The ends justified the means, sir. Yeah, but I noticed it wasn't your butt that was on the line, though. They also serve who only stand and wait, sir. Oh, spare me. Okay, let's leave. Oh, it's okay. Nothing. Need you. Tour pip. We'll get the toilet brush over. <clears throat> Gain access to the toilet. Nice club you've got here. I was wondering if you could help me. What? I mean, I beg your pardon? I'm sorry, but I don't understand. No surprise there, all righty. He says sorry, but he not speak English. Uh, but he didn't say anything. He not have tongue. No tongue? What happened? It was bet. Uh, and he lost. He won. You should see other chappy. <laughs> oh, yes. Here's your brush, sir. It wasn't easy getting it back. And there's a key. The manager took the brush from me, gave me the toilet keys as my reward, and stomped off. What was all that about? Manager, he say, bah, look at state of this. Need much cleaning in detergent before go around my Yuben. He said all that? Body language account for much, you know? <laughs> oh, yes, indeedy. Okay. Let's use that. <clears throat> and gain access to the toilet. <clears throat> and in here's a few things. Um. So I want that. Can't recall if there's anything else. Oh yeah, chain. Don't pull up that. Oops. I hadn't drunk anything since the morning, and I didn't need to use it. So... down <clears throat> I 
I need to learn about <clears throat> the bull's head. <clears throat> Uh, but first, I'm going to go over to Nijo, who I assume is playing with the ball now. Yeah. See the cat. Ring the bell. Oops. Oops. And now I can pick that up. And that is... The statuette looked pretty sorry for itself after its fall. Chipped with both arms broken off. Can use the grease paint, the statue. The plaster seemed to soak up the grease paint until it began to look like stone. Hi, Nijo. Hello again, sir. And how may I help you this time? What happened to your ball, Nijo? I regret to say that it has been confiscated by my father. Oh, Nijo, I'm sorry. Not to worry, sir. Soon he will forget why he has the ball and put it on the stand. At which point, I shall recover it. I'm sorry about the statuette being broken as well. Again, do not fret, sir. It has been on the shelf for a long time. As merchandise, it did not have legs. <laughs> now it hasn't got any arms either. Very droll, sir. That's not a very friendly cat you got there, Nijo. No, sir. It is a very unfriendly cat. Why do you keep it? Oh, it's not mine. It just rests where it pleases. And today, it pleases to rest there. As Kipling would say, it is a cat that walks by itself. Fiercely independent. And it smells. Is that your father lurking in the back of the stand? He is indeed. A roaring fellow. Ayuk's his name. You don't sound like you respect him very much. Don't I? Not only do I respect him, I rather like him. For all his bluster, we get on very well. So long, Nijo. Toodle peep, sir. Let's talk to Dwayne. Hi there, Dwayne. Hi, George. Hi there, George. How can I help you, young fella? Do you know what ill akul kald means? That's what you said to the kebab seller? <laughs> uh, no. I don't speak Arabic. Not a word. Have you had any dealings with the kebab seller? Absolutely not. Pearl's already had one attack of Montezuma's revenge. Have you met Ultar? Almost luxurious air-conditioned taxi ride, mister. Yeah, the cabbie. Tried to pull a bunco on us. Take us on a wild goose chase off into nowhere. And let's show him the statue. What do you think of this? Good gravy. Looks old. Yeah, I had to turn this town upside down. Boy, your luck's better than ours. Looks Roman. I wouldn't know. What'll they say back home? How much do you want, George? Oh, I couldn't. It's the find of a lifetime. I mean... Fifty bucks. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Here you go. And here you go. So now I have fifty bucks. Okay, well, I'll see you around, Dwayne. Count on it, George. And then Hello we're going to go back Pearl. to um, the club. Why, hello, George. 
It's such a pleasure to see you again. Do you know what ill occult cald means? My, sounds romantic. Uh, I don't yeah, think so. I don't think it is, though. Have you met the taxi man, Ultar? Heavens, yes. What a big man. Very muscular. <laughs> but you didn't go for a ride. Why, George, you're absolutely the most... Oh, you mean a taxi ride. <laughs> no, Dwayne wasn't interested, so it didn't happen. Have you had anything from the kebab stand? Hey, heavens no, with my digestion. You said that your company is based in Akron. And Dwayne said it's in Cleveland, no doubt. Well, yes, he did. Dwayne was in the Marines in Vietnam, you know. Anyway, he got a medical discharge. Thing is, he gets confused. We moved away from Cleveland five years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... He also gets a little paranoid. Thinks he's a spy or something. I'm so sorry, Pearl. Don't worry yourself, George. We live with it. Right, I've got to go now, Pearl. It's been a pleasure, George. Don't be a stranger. Let's go to Club Elephant and speak to Altar. And don't ever speak to Kebab Man again. Hello again, Ultar. Praise be to Allah. I am blessed with your bountiful presence once more. What does il akal kalb mean? Who teach you that? Najo told me to say it to Arto. And Arto come after you with big knife, yes? Yeah, how did you know? I know Arto. You tell him in bad Arabic that his kebabs made from dog meat. I said he was using dog food? No wonder he went crazy. No. Ultar not mean meat for dog. Ultar mean meat of dog. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Look what I've got. The towel from the toilet. What do you want with towel? Well, I don't know yet, do I? You sure a funny bod. Run around, collect things. Okay, nothing else here will, um... See you around, Ultar. Fare you most splendid, good sir. Maybe if I talk to Dwayne again, now that I f know that he's a spy. We might learn some things. All I need to know is, as soon as I get told about, um... Uh, Bull's head, then... I can work on from there. This guy here doesn't have much to talk about. It's me again. Muruba, hello there. Yeah, nothing. Ma asalama. Let's leave here. Speak to George. Hi there, Dwayne. Oh, Dwayne, sorry. That's the one. Oh, hi, George. Hi there, George. How can I help you, young fella? Mm. What does this toilet chain mean to you? It means that somewhere, somebody can't flush the toilet. <laughs> Have you seen this man before? Maybe. Oh. Where'd you get it? I just picked it up somewhere. Sure. I'm always picking up photos of complete strangers and then asking around. Ow! Damn it! There. 
I've got another picture of a complete stranger. Maybe I'll ask around about this one. <laughs> okay, well, I'll see you around, Need Wayne. to speak to Ulta Down about Skullface. That's what I hadn't done. Ask him if you've seen if he's seen this guy. And I think then he says about uh, he wanted to be taken. The stairs we go. Hello again, Ultar. Praise be to Allah. I am blessed with your bountiful presence once more. Have you seen this man before? Oh, most certainly. Was here only yesterday. Here? Yesterday? My God, he's close. Yes, he was asking a lot of questions, just like you. What did he ask about? He asked about American called Stoby. Stobart? Yes, Stobart. You know him. The killer knew my name. What else did he ask about? He asked about a German man called Klobner. I tried to remember the name of the man the conspiracy Klausner. has lost in Syria. Was his name Klausner? Sure, that is what Voltaire said. Klausner. I told this man in the picture, Klausner wanted to go up to Bull's Head. Hold on, he wanted to go where? Bull's Head. Big hill, ten mile out of town. Maybe sixty. When was that? Oh, ten mile maybe out of town, maybe ago. sixty. Hello again, Ultar. Praise be to Allah. I am blessed with your bountiful presence once more. What can you tell me about this Bull's Head Hill? It's most magnificent, lovely views. Worth visiting, yes, by indivity. How do I get there? No. Let me guess. You need fine luxury guide to take you there in air-conditioned taxi. Woe is me. Where can I find such a guide? And Ultar is most luxurious guide for most literally some way, in any direction. Gee willikers, lucky old me. Are you desirous of my pleasant and luxuriant service? Yes. All right, let's go. First, I regret the formalities. A trip to the bull's head. Fifty Yankee dollars, please. Which I just so happen to have. It's a lot of money. Oh, what the hell. Here you go. Most excellent. Oh, dude. Mister, we make with haste. Ah, okay. I'll be along in a minute. It didn't seem right to take off with the toilet keys, so I left them on the bar. Good call. Well done, George. So when we go to the luxurious Hello again, Ultar. Cab. His most splendid and adventurous client. That's your taxi? Oh yes, most assuredly. Most entirely splendid taxi in all Marib. It looks like an old army truck to me. Bah! You Americans with your checkerboard caps and your jet hashes. You have lost sight of what a taxi should truly be. About four tons by the look of it. There, you have hit the nail in the nutshell. Okay already, let's go. Regrettably not, most esteemed pair. There is a minor problem of a tiny nature. The fan belt has taken it upon itself to break. So, what are you gonna do? What can I do? I must wait for a ride to the garage for a replacement. How long is that gonna take? One day, maybe six. I can't wait that long, we gotta get moving. But how, my friend? I'll think of something. How about this? Is this any use to you? My friend, the very thing, yes. 
I equip myself before even Bulldog engaging the in these conversations. Me, cut it in two lengthways and gave me half back. With his half, he did the kind of fan belt replacement that's normally done with stockings. Now, if I knot the ends together, so... Serviceable, yes? Very serviceable indeed. Stockings might work on a Bentley, but on a truck, the coarse toweling did the job nicely. Come along, my friend. You want to see the bull's head? Yes? Yes. And away they went. So here we are. Um, there's not a lot to discover. There's a hole here. I damaged that tree enough for one day. Right. So let's combine the tree branch with the towel. With a flourish, I tied the end of the towel to the stick with a textbook reef knot. And let's pop that in the hole. I could see that crack would make a good anchor point. And now we're going to take a dangerous uh, step down here with a dodgy twig and towel. Well, that looked really safe. But I had no choice. I hadn't anticipated going mountaineering when I'd come to Syria. And from here, we have a hole in the wall. I didn't like the idea of putting my hand in there. But there was something in there, a metal ring, as wide as my hand. I took a firm hold of the ring and pulled. Whoa there. Okay, so just gonna make a quick save. Around the corner, I found the corpse. Indiana Jones. Oh my god. Klausner? Large as life and twice as dead. I'd hardly had time to accept the fact when I heard the door mechanism start up again. Oh man, no! The door had slammed shut, trapping me. I had a bad feeling about how Klausner had died. Okay, let's examine the tablet. I couldn't think of anything to do with the statue, apart from scaring small children with it. A stone head bearing three bearded faces. It was a strange image, but a powerful one, redolent with antiquity and ancient mysteries. Sure was an ugly one, though. <laughs> okay, all right. And did hey. his hand. What's this? I'd found some kind of lens. A very old lens made from a very hard glass. 
That settled it. The knight on the manuscript had been holding a lens the whole time, not a crystal ball. I'd searched Klausner once and knew that the lens was the only thing he'd been carrying. No portable phone, no demolition charges, no five-course meal. You'd think international conspirators would go around better equipped. Right, then over here we have a special map. I couldn't take the inscription with me, and I didn't have a notebook or a camera to record it. All I could do was stare at it and try to memorize it. In Occidenta Sita Est, in Ora Mundi. Okay. That would have to do. The mount's opening. It must be Ultar. My God. If he comes in, we'll both be trapped. Ultar! Don't come in! It's a trap! Stay where you are! You! Hello, oh, Mr. Stobart. We meet in the most unusual places. Please, do not make any sudden moves. I have no desire to maim you. Did you say maim? I did. Dead men tell no tales, as you say. And I want to hear everything that you have to tell. And what if I don't want to talk? Then I shall, most regrettably, have to kill you. Rest assured, however, that I am an excellent shot. You would not suffer. Oh, that's good. Uh, believe me, I'm really assured. It is rather dark in here. I think we should conduct our business outside. Why should I make myself an easier target? If I fire at you, Mr. Stobart, I shall hit you even in here. But... Unfortunately, my marksmanship will suffer. It could be the difference between hitting you in the leg or the groin. Boy, mm. it sure is hot in here. No sudden moves, Mr. Stobart. Okay, so now we're going to have a talk with Mr. Khan. Or whatever he wants to call himself. Now then, where shall we start? How about being bosom buddies and you putting that gun away? Klausner, do you know where he is? Yep, he's dead. Just around the corner of the cave. You want to look? I'll take your word for it. How did he die? Starvation or dehydration by the look of it. He was caught in this trap you were shouting about? Yes, I suspected as much. The Templars were not ones to give away their secrets lightly. <laughs> Was he carrying anything of importance? No, nothing. So, why is this location important? What did the Templars hide here if not an artifact? Well, there was something in Latin up on the wall. Latin? Do you remember it, Mr. Stobart? What did it say? In Accidenta Sita Est, in Ora Mundi. Ah, the words of Caesar. Yes, that makes sense. Well, I know that roughly it means to the west, to the edge of the world. But what the heck is that about? It tells me where the sword of Baphomet lies. Mr. Stobart, I am sure that you are just what you appear to be. A gifted amateur. Thanks, I think. But I can no longer tolerate your interference. There is far more at stake than you realize. So what are you going to do? I regret that we must end this here and now. Your only choice now is whether you die like a man or like a dog. <laughs> like a man. Okay, you're the boss. I'll take my medicine. You are an honorable man, Mr. Stobart. A rare breed. I should like to shake your hand. Yeah. Well, what the heck? Okay, now to be quick. It was a long way down. Below, I could see Ultar's truck. Hehe. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.
Sorry, Mr. Khan. Luckily, the canopy on Ultar's truck broke my fall. Thank goodness for that. The worst part of the experience was Ultar's driving. What about the lens? Is it still in one piece? Oh, yeah. Well, it's good to see you again, Josh. Really? Well, I have to say, I'd have enjoyed Syria a lot more if you'd been there. I wouldn't have been much help. Anyway, you did just fine on your own. Okay, let's... I'll be back as soon as I can. Okay. Leave here. And I know where that knight is. In the one place I've been trying to go to. Oh, he's back again. You're back. We. Oui. I have returned. Hello again. Hello again, monsieur. Well, I wasn't expecting to see you back here again. No. Well, it is a strange thing, but I am here on duty. Oh, yeah. On duty? But you're just sitting there drinking wine. No. I am not just drinking wine. I am under cover. In my uniform. I must be missing something. You're in uniform. Precisely, monsieur. My cover is that of an indolent, wine-guzzling police officer. You've got me convinced. Merci. But in re reality, my every muscle is poised, every nerve honed. I am drawn tight, ready to pounce. Pazang! <laughs> Who or what were you planning to pazang on? You must have heard, m monsieur, of the terror that is gripping Paris. You mean the killings? Oh, at last, someone's taken action. <laughs> People die every day. No, no, I am on the trail of Sewer Jacques. I, uh... Who? Sewer Jacques, the terror of the subterranean city. He pops up here. He pops up there. The cops, they seek him everywhere. Is he so hush or beneath the neck? That damned elusive Sir Jacques. Bravo, that's very good. Merci. I was up half the night writing that. Who is this Sir Jacques character anyway? Ah, uh, if we but knew that, we could have him in custody in an hour. But. He is cunning. To despoil the sewers of our fair city, he has co committed many deceptions. He has pretended to be a police officer and deluded a poor war veteran. Uh-oh. He has pretended to be a jongleur. Wow. Is that the time? And an American tourist. What nationality are you, monsieur? Canadian. Well, uh, gotta go now. <laughs> See ya. Well, it's not everyone who can say they started an urban myth. Unless you're talking to an American. An American can get away with saying they're Canadian, I guess. Especially in Europe. As many of us don't really know the difference between the two. Ah, there's the guy. So I can talk to this priest and... Uh, excuse me, father. Pardon? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all, monsieur. It will be my pleasure to help you. Okay. First off... What do you make of this chalice? It uh, certainly looks very old. About as old as this church, I think. There are seems to be an engraving on it. Yeah? What does it say? I do not know. It is very tarnished. With your permission, uh, I could try polishing it. Uh, I promise I will be very careful. Sure. 
That'd be very good of you. It'll yes, be helpful sir, later. It shouldn't take very long. Feel free to look around. Okay, thanks. Right. Now. The statue had any secrets. It was concealing them pretty well. The statue had any secret. A statue of a knight holding a staff and a scroll. Right, there we go. And now I could put this lens on the scroll. The lens fitted into the end of the scroll like a hand into a glove. Hey! It's that a guy. Templar burning at the stake. And a date. Let me see. M C C C X I V. That's thirteen fourteen. Right, let's look at these sarcophaguses, because one of them's got a knight there in the company of his fellows. Biblical references engraved into the tomb edge to guide his way to the next world. My guess. A stone knight lay on the church floor. Just think, there's a dead guy under there. The second stone knight in a row of four lay on the church floor. I was surprised Philip LeBel had left this place alone. Okay, let's chat to the uh, priest. He might know a bit more information about the... Uh... Sarcophagus. Hello again, Father. Thank you. Hey, thanks. It is my pleasure, Monsieur. What was the writing on the chalice? It was not writing. Uh, my mistake. It was a coat of arms. The remarkable thing is that it seems very familiar. Yeah? Oui. I think I have seen it on that wool tomb in the far corner. That winged horse is quite distinctive. Did you know that the center window conceals an image of a man burning at the stake? The burning man? What, you knew? That there was a hidden image? No. But the church has a reputation for being haunted. Many times, people have claimed to have seen a burning man in the window. But when others, they look, there is nothing. Perhaps the light has to be just so for the figure to appear. Yeah, or maybe you need a special lens. You must be proud to have such an incredible collection of stained glass. Pride is a sin, monsieur. Let's see what else but he knows about the place. marvel when the light shines through them. It is a fine example of the artisan's genius. What do you know about the Knights Templar? You have come to the right place, if that is your interest. Many of them were executed in the square outside. It was a disgrace to France. Well, the Pope was right behind it, though. Clement V was a man of mammal, not of God. That's kind of forthright for a priest, isn't it? You think so? It is hard to be sure what happened. It is so long ago. And let's How long have you worked him. here? Hardly work, monsieur. This is a calling. I have been helping Father Flambert for nearly six months now. I guess you don't know much about the history of this church, then. Just a little. You've got quite a shine on that candlestick. Ah, we? Oui. Anything less than best would be an insult to the Almighty. I guess so. I never thought of it like that. Okay, let's leave. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. And let's examine that um, one in the corner. Ah, 
I believe that's the one he was on about. Now that my attention had been drawn to it, there was no mistake. There was no name on it. But the coat of arms was undeniably the Pegasus of the De Vasconcellos family. Which means... I'd found the last resting place of Don Carlos. My eye was drawn to the biblical references carved into the edge of the tomb. Hey, maybe these biblical references mean something. Psalms 32.7, John 4.11, Corinthians 1, 4, 5, and just one more. Psalms 22.21. I may not be perfect, but I've got a memory like a steel trap. The chalice had led me to these inscriptions, but it looked like a happy that coincidence Bible. to me. After all, the de Vasconcellos arms were already on the manuscript. Note, I was still convinced that the chalice had some significance all of its own. Well, we can head back to Spain. And we can tell uh, the Countess that we've found her long-lost relative. And... I believe then we can look into the Bible and the references. So... Okay, I can't go there yet. Um, oh, unless Lobino knows anything. I believe there's an well, there's one more place, one more historic place for me to view in Paris. Hello, Georgie. Where have you been? Nicole said you were away. I just returned from Syria. Syria? On the trail of the Templars? It's a long story, but I found the bull's head. It was referred to on the manuscript, remember? Yes. Uh, what is it? A secret cave built into a high cliff face. In the cave, I discovered a map bearing a phrase in Latin. In Occidenta Sita Est in Ora Mundi. The island of Britain. Lies mm. at the edge of the world to the west. Strange. That map seems to contain a series of pointers. Like I said, it's a treasure map. While I was in Syria, I discovered a strange pagan statue. It was like a head with three bearded faces. Horrible. That sounds as if it could be Baphomet, the idol described by the Templars. Baphomet. The poor Knights of Christ had an idol that looked like that? Allegedly. The description of the idol came from the evidence extracted by the Inquisition. Mind you, not one statue or idol was ever found on Templar property. Until now, that is. Just last month, a statue of Baphomet was unearthed right here in Paris. Where? At the Institute Hermetique de Naval. The statue is beneath the foundations. It was discovered by some workmen while renovating the building. Okay, so we're going to go Can there. Can you tell me any more about the statue of Baphomet? It's a fearful image, even now. A bearded head. The base of the statue is carved with Templar symbols. One of the workmen noticed a curious stain at the base. He claimed it looked like blood. Blood? That's right. Okay, let's leave Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome. I'm not going to show him the cup because he just want to steal it. We don't want that. So 
right, let's get out of here. Let's go investigate. This is where I'm going to be using that last bit of uh, plaster of Paris and grease paint, I believe. Excuse me, could you help me? What is it? I've got a few questions. What does the word Templar suggest to you? Templar? Mm, nothing. Nothing. You're doing a fine job. Merci. I have my professional pride. I don't think I've ever seen a Galois smoke so stylishly. It's a natural talent. I'm being sarcastic. I'm being indifferent. You're very good at that as well. Merci. Vive l'indifférence. So, what are you doing here? I am having my break. Yeah, I mean, when you finish your break. When I finish my break? An interesting concept, monsieur. You'll probably need to think about it. I could have another cigarette while I consider. Perhaps tomorrow too? Okay, let me put things differently. What were you hired to do here? I was hired to keep the archaeological dig in the basement of this building clear of debris and to touch up damage to the door frames with my little pot of faith. It's a very responsible job. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not a very responsible person. So what do you know about the excavation? I know they won't let me in to do my job. I would complain to my union, but uh, uh, You couldn't be bothered to join. Right. Tell you what, though. I'm surprised at the sort of people interested in this uh, excavation. What's unusual about the visitors to the excavation? <laughs> None of them look like archaeologists to me. Do you know what an archaeologist looks like? Sleepy suits, crocodile-eyed attaché cases, Rolex oyster. But no archaeologist <laughs> dresses like that. Quite right, monsieur, quite right. So, who are they? Who cares as long as they pay me? Right, so we're done with this. Be chat. seeing you. Au revoir, monsieur. We will be going back to him. Hey, monsieur, get away from my paint pot. Okay. I should think so. Meddling with a man's paint pot. Pah. Okay, so down the steps we go. We have a thermostat. The doorway led to an old utility closet that had lost its door. There was nothing interesting in there. I couldn't imagine what I'd achieved by turning the dial. A thermostat was mounted over a radiator. The radiator was pumping out heat as the thermostat was cranked right over to full. No wonder it was warm in here even with the door open to the chill of fall. We have a door. I didn't think that the guard would just let me waltz past. Besides, I had a hunch that door was locked. That guard had been put here to guard something. My guess was that the excavation was behind that door. There was a closed door with toilet scratched into the cheap veneer. Now I need to go and Hi? use the toilet. Uh, excuse me? Oui. So, what exactly are you doing here? I'm guarding. You expect to find me sharing sheep? Take it easy. I just didn't realize you were a guard. I'd like to know what you're guarding, please. That's a secret. It wouldn't happen to be an archaeological site, would it? Are you asking me or telling me? I'm telling you. Then why ask? I had a feeling this was no <laughs> normal hole in the ground. What do you know about the Knights Templar? The toilet there was a be long the last pause thing I during ask. which the guard said nothing. Then he said, Nothing. Nothing at all? Is this a test? What, like a history pop test? No, like a test. Okay, yes, it's a test. 
then I know absolutely nothing about the Templars. The guard was being amazingly evasive. It was going to take more than goodwill to get past him. It sure is hot in here. I have to have the door open to allow the workmen access, so why not? I turn the heat up. You could wrap up warm. I have my gloves if it gets cold, but why bother when it's warm anyway? Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Okay, I want to try the door. There was a closed door with toilet scratched into the cheap veneer. That door's locked, monsieur. Hi again. What is it? I'd like Trying to, use the to get toilet. into a locked washroom. I had the strongest feeling of deja vu. I'd like to use the washroom, but the door's locked. Oh, that's no problem. You can have the key. Thanks. Here's the keys. Thanks. Merci, no. monsieur. No, 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 no. I want the toilet door key. I need to use the uh, toilet again. Again? Already? I haven't even I left have your this side. <laughs> How technical do you want me to get? Hmm, never mind. Here's the key. Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Alright. Let's open up the toilet door. And Capacious as my pockets were, I didn't figure I could cram a shovel in them. The shovel used to feed the furnace was stuck into the pile of coal. The thing felt really hot. Big demands seemed to be being made on it. Being in a charming comfort station like this made me think fondly of the toilet in Syria. That place was kept in pretty good order. At least, it had been until I vandalized it. Still, it was all for a good cause. Yeah. I wasn't that interested in what might go into a restroom's garbage to investigate. I didn't want to use that unless I really had to. The cold taps washer looked to have failed. It was just dribbling down the sink. The cold tap... Doink. Okay. So, we want to combine the key with the soap. I made an impression of the big key in the cake of soap. And the plaster Paris. I carefully sprinkled the plaster into the soap mold I'd made of the key. And now we can water it. And now we have a fake key. Well, it had taken a while, but I had made myself a completely unconvincing plaster key. Way too fragile to use in a lock. I'd have to substitute it for the real one. The trouble was, it looked like plaster and not metal. Then again, that plaster statue in Syria hadn't looked like stone until I'd been a bit artful with it. Maybe I could improve the key as well. Uh, no. Okay. So. I'll leave here first. I then need to... Give the keys back to him. What is it? Here's the keys. Thanks. Merci, monsieur. Do you mind if I use the phone? Be my guest. I'm paid to guard this door. The phone can look after itself. 
Hi, Nico. Josh, what have you discovered? Nothing yet. Nothing? Is is something wrong? No. Josh, why are you calling me? Oh, no reason. I just wanted to hear your voice. You did. Well, this is my voice saying, "Don't bother me. I'm busy." Oh. Right. So I need um, Nico to distract the guard. But I might need to talk to him first. Hi, it's me again. What now? Be seeing you. What is you? Hey, Monsieur, get away from my paint pot. Okay. I should think so. Meddling with a man's paint pot. Pa what? I turned the heating off. Cooler. Hi, Nico. It's me. I'm at the excavation site. Goodbye, George. No, wait a minute. I need your help. What kind of help? I told you I'm busy. This will only take a few minutes. I promise. Okay. What do you want me to do? I want you to keep somebody on the phone for a while. Who? A painter. I need to get at his pot. <laughs> oh, okay. Stay on the line. I'll go and get him. Uh, call for Hi, you. it's me again. What now? You've got a phone call. For me? Are you certain? It's a woman. She sounded hot. What woman? She must be mistaken, monsieur. Well, she asked for that hunk of a man with the nicotine fingers and his ass hanging out of his pants. <laughs> Certainly sounds like me. Stand back. It wouldn't do to keep the lady from uh, her hunk. Yes. Hmm, no way. Okay, so that must be all. No, oh no, I know what the grease paint's for. Well, monsieur, what a strange woman. She was all over me, and then suddenly, nothing but abuse. Really? Why, abuse. Ah, oh, well. I have a cigarette to finish. And monsieur, if she calls again, I am not available. Okay, let's borrow the keys again. Hi again. What is it? I need to use the, uh, the toilet again. Again? Already? I have this problem. <laughs> How technical do you want me to get? Very. Hmm. Never mind. Here's the key. See, he has his gloves on, which is what I need. Here's the keys. Thanks. Oh, merci, monsieur. <laughs> Keep forgetting I'm in the chat the, uh, box. A toilet again. Again? I have this. Hmm. Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Right now, I'll slip in here. And exchange the keys. Quickly and without fuss, I swap the fake key for the real thing. 
Right, so he still has his gloves on. What is it? I held Which means my he can't and feel the real key. Notice the substitution. Here's the keys. Uh, thanks. Merci, monsieur. Right now, I need Nico to uh, distract Hi, Nico. him one more time. It's me again. I'd guessed. What do you want this time? What did you say to the painter? I shan't repeat it, George. Look, I need to get the guard out of the way. Could you call back and ask him to get the painter again? Okay, I'll call back soon. This looked like a good place to watch things develop. Hey, you! It's then, the uh, phone! Yeah? Who is it? How should I know? What am I? Your social secretary? It's not a chick, is it? Yes, it's a woman. Are you going to answer it? Does she have a warm, sensual voice like molten chocolate? Yes, yes, she has a really sexy voice. Now get a move on. <laughs> I'm not talking to her. I can see that. You're wasting time talking to me. No, you don't understand. I refuse to talk to her. You refuse? You refuse? I'm wasting valuable time. Don't make me laugh. Your time valuable? You just stand around all day. I have a highly responsible job. Pa, don't pa me, you elephantine oaf. My job is important. Impossible. They would have hired somebody competent in that case. Meaning what? Instead of which they hired a dismal rent a cop like you. All epaulette and no brains. Why, you? This looked set to carry on for some time. It was too good an opportunity to miss. Which means I'm going down to the uh, secret statue room. There was no doubt about it. It was the same sort of idol I'd seen in Syria, Baphomet. The Templars had certainly been through here. Okay. Close up, the pattern didn't make any sort of sense. It fanned out around an axis point, a kind of focus to one side. We use our cup. Pop that in there. And there it was, decoded by the curves of the chalice. The image of a church. I found out what the chalice was for. You've solved the puzzle? Yeah. There was a distorted picture at the Baphomet site. When I viewed it in the polished surface of the chalice, it changed. What did it show? A picture of a church with a square tower. And is that all I have to say? I guess I'd better return the chalice to the Countess. Hurry back, George. Right, so let's go back to Spain. And we will... See what the Countess has to say to us. Yeah, 
airport. Senor Lopez. I'd been planning to return the chalice anyway, but I hadn't expected the trail to bring me here. The Villa de Vasconcelos was as picturesque as ever. The weather was still clear, and Lopez was still watering the damn lawn. <laughs> I was beginning to suspect that he was surgically attached to that hose. Hi there, Lopez. How's tricks? Senor Stobart, how pleasant to see you. You are well. Fine, thanks. Is the Countess in? She is waiting for you. I will show you up. Thank it's you. It's okay, I know the way. Senor Stobart, I feel I owe you an apology. No, you don't. I was impolite on our first meeting. Look, Lopez, just forget about it. I came on like a snake oil merchant. I wouldn't have trusted me in your shoes. You do not understand. Finding the chalice has given my lady a new lease of life. It's a marvel. She smiles, she laughs. The tradesmen are saying that she is on Prozac. Okay, so before I go inside, I oh know I have gone inside. Yeah, before I go up the stairs, I will save and just quickly um, take a break. If you bear with me.